Hey Brian from Snake Bites here. You know I started out keeping reptiles as a hobby and it obviously now turned into a business. But we still keep a few animals here that we consider just pets and are still a hobby to us. We're gonna show you those as well as some of our best sellers. You're watching Snake Bites. I've been into the reptile hobby since I was a teenager, and one of the biggest challenges when I started my business was to not let the daily stresses steal the passion for the animals that I've always had. After all, it's that passion that made me want to do reptiles for a living. Take for example this Super Ball, which is actually a blood python, ball python cross. It's a project that we work with. Maybe we'll breed it, maybe we won't. It's not part of my business. I do it just because I love it, and they're just such cool animals. Retics and the big snakes are definitely fit into the hobby category for me. These guys are just awesome animals, and again, I don't care if I ever really even breed them. If I do and produce babies, that's fantastic. But you know what? They're just awesome animals, and it's an animal I'll always have, and as you can see, you get a pretty good workout when you're working with them, too. Now, berms are definitely in the hobby category for me. I've been keeping these guys since I was 17 years old, and I can't imagine a time where I won't have a big Burmese in my collection. They're just so awesome, and again, you can see, even with them being really big, they're really tame, and they're not nearly as hard to handle as a reticulated python. Boas definitely fall into the hobby category for me. I wish they didn't. I wish they were part of my business, and I get asked all the time to show them more boas in the show. The reason I don't show them and the reason I consider them just a hobby is because I just can't produce boas for crap. I try every single year, and I'm lucky to get one or two litters a year, if that. I wish I had the magic touch when it came to boas, but for now I keep them just because I love them. On the business side, there's all kinds of animals that do really well as far as sales go. Whether it's green tree pythons, rat snakes, all types of colubrids, boas and pythons, you name it. But there's really been three animals that have anchored that side of our business. And that's been hognose snakes, corn snakes, and ball pythons. Take for example this anaconda hog. This is just one of a handful of mutations that are awesome in the hog nose. There's pastel pinks, there's azanthic, there's caramel albinos, there's hypo, and even snow, just to name a few. Corn snakes are definitely a huge part of our business and probably the biggest production that we have here as far as numbers go. There's so many different varieties and color flavors that it's amazing. We've even dedicated entire shows to that topic. This is a brand new type of corn snake that's co-dominant. It's called a tessera corn. I'm really excited to see when we get these into other color phases. The thing that's neat about them is because they're co-dominant, you can breed this into any mutation and half the babies are going to come out patterned just like this tessera. All right, guys, now the ball pythons. Now, I know we're talking about the hobby versus business aspect of reptiles, but unlike Brian, I wasn't in the reptiles before I started working here. I never had a snake, never owned a reptile. I started working here, I started feeding, watering, taking care of these animals, watching them grow, and began to love them. So I guess you can kind of say that my job is my hobby now, and my hobby is my job, which isn't a bad thing. Let me show you a couple ball pythons that I just love to take care of. This is a ghost Mojave spider. This is one of our hatchlings. Pretty small, but I'll definitely get this thing up to size. Um, our ball pythons are always our biggest sellers here at PHP. This is another one of our wicked little guys, Calico Yellow Belly. It's in shed right now, but you can already tell this thing is going to be sick. Right here we got a female lesser bee. Here we got a female albino spinner. Kind of resembles an albino spider, except a lot less pattern, a lot more yellow. Another awesome kind of hobby we have here because we haven't really started breeding yet. This is the Angolan python. I am in love with these animals. These animals are sweet. Look at their pattern. Looks like camouflage. I'm sure Brian's already talked to you about blood ball pythons and uh, what we got going on with those. Here's some albino bloods. Um, these things are just wicked. This is my personal project, kind of like my hobby. Just going to beat these things up, get them ready for breeding, and uh, we'll see how it comes. I told Brian, don't sell these things. I hate to see my children go. I started out in the same boat as Kelly, you know, I didn't really like snakes too much when I started here. But once I got into it, you know, I learned that all these color morphs are pretty cool. But my favorite color is green, like the color of money. So I got this five year plan going because Brian's pretty old. I want to make partner and then push him out the way so it's Scar Enterprises and we'll make it rain. <laughs> okay everybody, Hen Dog bought me these beautiful albino horn frogs to breathe. But guess what? I think they're just pets. And I don't care, because I love them. Look at them. One of my hobby non-breeding projects around here is a burrowing python. I consider them pets. They've been here for years. They'll be around for years. 
It's just the passion in me. That's why I do it. I don't care if they breed. Okay, here we are at my Condro breeding project. They'll probably never breed, but who cares? They'll just be another hobby, the many hobbies at BHB. And as George would say, we love them. Hey guys, it's George here. As long as I can remember, I've been into snakes and reptiles. And every day I get to come here, and now it's a job for me. I get to see these great snakes. I get to see great family guys I work with. I love them. With big. Oh, my blanket. Go. Go. Oh, come on. Get come on. Get away from me. Dude, go back to work. Get the hell out of here. All right, come here. I love you. I love you, son. Get out of here. Okay, Chewy here. People say I around too much, but now it's time to get serious. I'm gonna give you my thoughts on turning your hobby into a job. One, you need ambition. Chewy, Chewy has, has none. none. Two, dedication. Chewy, Chewy has none. none. Three, passion. Chewy, Chewy has, has a little. little. Four, money. Chewy, Chewy has, has none. none. Maybe one day when I hit the lottery, I'll have some. Be floating around the pool, drinking Bacardi. Anyways, getting back to the business subject. Um, I think you should I don't know. I don't know about business. I'm, what am I doing telling you about business? I'm just going to go back to cleaning up and around. On this week's comment of the week on the snake genetics for dummies, the question was, what do you do for a living? An animal vampire said, I go to school for a living and I can't wait to get out of here. I'm so tired of homework. Hey, just hang in there. Before you know it, you'll be out of school and you'll be wishing you were back in there. You guys keep sending me creative comments and I'm gonna feature you on a future episode. All right, it's Cal's question of the week. Now you heard about our hobbies, obviously the reptiles. And we have other hobbies also. Chewy loves hunting, George loves roller skating, Curry loves sleeping, uh, me and Steve love hockey. So I wanna know from you guys, what's your hobby? Text your video comment below. Why can't I have a cool thing? So there it is. Even though it's difficult sometimes balancing the hobby with the business, I think we do a pretty good job of it. It's all about keeping your passion for the animals. Make sure you guys check out our member-driven social network, snakebitestv.ning.com. We're adding new features all the time. It's a really cool place. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites.